Everything in the automotive DIY world is not an LS. Welcome to the Notebooks Garage, Willie with you once again. I've got a video that's going to follow my intro here about a modification that I did to my Gen 1, Gen 2 oil pump that I wanted to share with everybody. But before we do that, let me thank you for subscribing, for liking the videos, and leaving comments on the channel. I appreciate it very, very much, and it's my goal to continue to bring you more content in the future. But let's get back to the purpose of this video. Back in 2012, at several mechanical disasters on the existing equipment that I had, a 4.3 liter, the 355 that powered the 83 crew cab, and um, even the 96 Lumina, all of these engines basically decided to give up the ghost. So in my process and quest for mechanical perfection, the modification, I set about to make these engines better than they were as they existed before the failures took place and to increase the longevity and dependability of these engines by employing modifications that I was aware of. So, on this particular video that I filmed, I was concentrating on the small block Chevy, big block Chevrolet, Gen 1, Gen 2 oil pump, outlining some of the modifications that were at first detailed by John Lingenfelter. Now, John Lingenfelter was an NHRA driver, engineer, and tuner over his career. Lingenfelter won 13 career national events in competition eliminator and was the first driver in his class to break the six second quarter mile barrier. Folks, that's moving. He's also the founder of uh, Lingenfelder Performance Engineering. So if this man goes through the trouble of doing this modification and recommending that they be done to improve oiling, I figure he knows what he's talking about. So I performed them on both of my engines with good results. Now, in all honesty, these modifications can be applied to any driven oil pump, be it Ford, be it Chrysler, Chevrolet, you name it, it can probably be done to improve the oiling characteristics of the particular power plant that uh, the oil pump is going to be attached to. I even did this when my LS in the 2500, the O-ring, I know a lot of you are familiar with that, Finally gave up the ghost and started sucking air and everything, and um, so I pulled the front of it down and took the oil pump off, which was probably unnecessary. Unfortunately, I did not film it when I performed this, but I went ahead and purchased a new oil pump and went ahead and took it apart, which completely devoided the warranty. Yeah, Melling, like you're going to know, you didn't hear that, but I was shocked when I looked inside the case and saw the overall condition but understand that these are production pieces and production pieces are a compromise between efficiency and operation they are not optimized for performance so i applied some of the same tactics that lingen felter recommended on small block chevrolet big box chevrolet gen 1 gen 2 oil pumps and i have to say just like this modification that you see me doing on this oil pumps, I got similar results on the gauge. No, I don't have a dyno. I don't have a flow meter. Well, the butt dyno tells the difference, and also reading the gauges tells me the difference in terms of performance for the available oil pressure in all conditions, startup, cold, and even hot. But once again, we're talking about some people that really know and have put a lot of time and experience and resources 
into these concepts and modifications. So I employed them with pretty good results. And both of those engines are still alive today. One of them is still in the truck. The other one's still on the stand in running condition. So I'm quite happy with it, and I just wanted to share it with you. So sit back, relax, get some popcorn, get a soft drink. Happy to see you here, folks. Don't forget, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Let's get to the video. Okay, folks, here we go. We got another installment of stuff you can do yourself. This is a typical oil pump. This is what happens to be out of the 4.3 liter Vortec V6. Now, this is a modification, or rather, this is the stock appearance of the oil pump. What I want you to notice if I can get this just right, check out the outlet right there, and you can see how sharp and flat the casting was course when it came from the foundry. Now the oil pump in its own right is uh, of a pretty good design and more than sufficient for even mild horsepower applications according to a lot of engine builders. Now some years ago I ran across this modification in a book on um, Chevrolet big blocks actually and well I figured if John Legenfelter can do this type of modification and recommend it, then gee whiz, who knows more? John Legenfelter or me? That was a no-brainer for me. So I actually did it on my small block Chevrolet that I have in my truck. And I did notice that there was quite a bit of difference in the available oil pressure at idle and startup and uh, overall performance wise seems to be quite good. Now here's the new pump and what you're going to notice is the modifications that John Legenfelter recommended. One of the reasons he said this, it has to do with spark chatter of course. Chevrolet distributors drive the oil pump and speeding up and slowing down causes differences in the flow of the oil and the characteristics. So Ligenfelter, for whatever reason, it was never really fully explained, recommended to cut some release. There's one there. See if I can angle it just so. There's the second one. Third one there. And the fourth one there. And they go all the way down to the pump body and also go across the bottom. Now at the same time, I radius the holes the outlet hole that you see right there making for a much smoother transition sorry about that trying to get it in focus making a much smoother transition for the oil to flow as it as it is being delivered under pressure it makes sense no sharp edges no eddies no disruption of flow you want to smooth it out just like you were just like you would if you were polishing and porting on the valves. Legenfelter recommended this. So I tried it again on my small block and I, my small block and I noticed quite a bit of difference in the available oil pressures with just the stock V8 oil pump. Now here's the bottom plate of a stock pump. Here's the outlet hole right there and of course the pressure relief. And this one is a modification that Legenfelter recommends for it also. Just cutting these grooves along the outlet and of course I went a little crazy with the uh, stone and radius the hole out a little bit more and smoothed it out because if you notice in the bottom if you ever get one and take it apart if you notice in the bottom it looks like they just took a plunge bit and plunged it down in there and made a deep pocket that would look like it would disturb the uh, oil flow as it goes out. So I went in both sides of the uh, oil pump outlet, inlet rather, and uh, 
smoothed it out, radius it out, radius the transition right there. As you can see, hopefully, there's a little, little bit of a shot of it to make it smoother and more rounded. There's no exact science to it, just smooth it out. Now, the tools that I use are quite simple ones. Let me show them to you right here. This is my Dremel type speedometer driven, speedometer cable driven device that goes on to my Dremel type rotary tool thing. Now, I went to my local do-it-yourself made in China store because I couldn't stand the price of the first one I picked up, which was 35 bucks. Picked this one up for 14. So far, it's done quite good. Now, one recommendation: go to the Dremel section of your local hardware store, purchase carbide bit, a diamond bit, and several stones that you can use for polishing of several different diameters and several different shapes. So you can effectively get inside the pump body or any other tight space and do any cleanup that's necessary after you cut the relief holes in the sides of the pump. Of course, you want to deburr everything before you assemble it. Now, the other thing that was done to further improve the oil flow was the main cap itself. It received the same treatment. Polished, chamfered, radiused out to give the oil a smooth path with a smooth transition. Anything to free up horsepower, anything to increase the lubrication capacity of, of the pump of the engine to save that thing. Go for it. Final piece of the puzzle, the one-piece oil pump drive shaft from fill in the blank, name your favorite one. Mine happens to be a generic melon. Install that, and you should have no problems with your oil system. All right, so we'll keep you posted on the 4.3 Vortec V6 build. Thanks.